Who wants to win some prizes? Morning, y'all. It's changeover day. Post in the comments down below. Let me know if you can spot any difference. Not sure you've spotted it yet. Right, yesterday's question about long drive courses playing for people who hit the ball a long way. Some people got the wrong idea, I think. Some people said long driving's a skill and it should be rewarded, and I totally agree. But long driving isn't a greater skill than maybe hitting the ball straight or controlling distance. They're, they're both skills, and they I think they all need to be appreciated. Definitely some of the stadium courses, we play them when we travel, and I certainly see them on the PGA Tour. They encourage longer hits over water, and then the risk and reward the, the risk isn't there for when it does go offline so then it encourages the bigger hitters I mean I've played lots of courses where 270 narrows in past 290 it really widens out I mean it, that just we need to be thinking about the way courses are being designed and golf is being shown I think to make sure that all the skill set are being rewarded and punished right today's question how often do you change your driver. So how often would you change out your golf clubs in the driver department? Oh, not holding enough. How often are you changing that big stick? Hit that comment section up down there. Hit thumbs up button while you're down there. And don't be afraid to subscribe if you're loving the daily vlogs. So today's swing comes from Instagram, so if you don't follow me on Instagram, at Crossfield Mark, give me a follow, and all the swings next week are going to come from my Instagram account, and two have come from my Instagram account this week also, so if you want to get on the daily vlogs, that's the place to be. Uh, this guy was talking about chicken wing on the way through and wanting to hit the ball further, so we're going to talk a little bit about the way he turns his body, backswing wise, and then we'll talk about the implications of what he sees as the chicken wing here on the way through, so this arm buckling, um, how important that is or not but we're going to talk mainly about the way his body turns today. Right, first ideas need to be built around the way you're turning. So, this is complicated. Get, get your heads around this. You start by leaning forwards. And then there's a term used quite commonly in golf, which is you've got to maintain your spine angle. That is strictly isn't true. Because I will start leaning forwards, but at the top of my backswing, I am now not leaning forwards. I've extended my back. So I've gone from here, and I've almost stood up. But what I've done is I've tilted left shoulder lower than right and rotated. And it's these extensions as well as rotations that allow you, among other things, to pick up some speed. To give you an example, and I see this, if I make a swing where I stay leant forward for the whole swing, my swing looks like this. So if you look, I've finished, I'm still leaning forwards, but think about your follow through. Ask yourself this question, which way are you leaning, so forwards or backwards, at the end of your swing? So at the end of my swing, I'm actually tilted backwards. I started leaning forwards. So the downswing, you put this kind of lean forwards back in and then you take it out fast. You look like you're doing that okay actually on the way through, which we're going to come to later. But the backswing, you keep your bend in and rotate. We want to try and take that out. So a couple of good feelings you could use for this. You get a club on your shoulder. I want you to feel like this part of the grip doesn't come so far over to your right foot. So you're turning around your lean forwards. I want you to feel like almost this grip is just going down. So obviously it still comes in as it goes down, but it's only in line more well, say with my left foot. So I'm turning more this way, which is me actually extending my back. So if I was to over it, do it, I would start going this way, which you don't want to do, rather than turning around your lean forwards. Now the problem with this as well is what happens if I turn a long way this way, so turn and lean forwards, now I feel like I'm going to bottom out the club very low. I'm going to get quite stuck on the way through, so my body getting in the way, which is also why we start seeing these kind of ideas. So getting your head around some turn and extension in your back on the backswing can help with speed. It's certainly going to help us fix what happens down the way through, and I think improve your contact, which to me looks very clean and thin, possibly a lot out the bottom of the club and hitting the ground first. Just improving your strike alone, so from here opposed to over here so much, could contribute to some more distance. Oh. oh, God. Oh, that. 
but that's oh and oh it's just it's all very awkward at the moment i just feel like the temperature's dropping don't you <laughs> sorry what <laughs> Uh, oh, hang on, I think it's someone at the door, hang on. Yeah, it's just someone at the door, I have to go and answer the door is the problem, I suppose. Just, um, oh, uh, what? hang on, Milo's calling. Yeah, Milo? It's all right, he's all sorted now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he's <laughs> This is awkward, oh, hang on a minute. Oh, blister my feet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am Jordan Spieth, stroke, I am Rory Anderson. <laughs> Let's answer your questions. Hey Mark, so I had a question for you. Um, downhill putts, especially breakers, are you one to advocate or maybe say to deaden it with a hit off the toe or make a really easy swing? Personally, I like to hit it a little bit off the toe on those downhill or sliders just to take a little speed off, but I wanted to hear your thoughts. Cheers. Cheers bro, good question. Um, I don't do that myself and I prefer my students to work with speed than strike but saying that I have on some incidents when I'm missing left to right putters on the low side I make sure I try and hit the putt out the heel because I can tow my putts naturally. So then what happens is it starts a bit right on the right to left and misses on the low side so I try and hit it a little bit more out the heel to keep it on the high side that's when I'm missing not feeling as confident now if you're hitting your putts out the toe and it's working and you've got good pace control on the downhill sliders then do it it's not something I've particularly taught I seem to have more success with students simply just working on pace and timings of swings length and speed really combinations to control their distance but it's something that's talked about I don't think it's a fix per se I think it's something that will work for the individual player more than anything else I'm playing tennis tonight, yippee. I've just realised I'm not sure if anyone's got any tennis balls. Tennis balls. Right, next drill is to try and get you to stretch out a bit more on the way through and coordinate it with your body turn. So when you come down to hit the ball, I want your hands getting to their low point near your right hip, down by your right thigh. But I want your hips and shoulders to begin to open. So good drill, literally put the club 45 degrees behind you, turn your hips so they start to open up to where your imaginary target is, make sure pressure's on that front foot, and just push a bit of pressure down on this grip. So you feel how the shaft just bends, gives a little bit. Now from here, what I want you to do, keep turning your body, keep turning your shoulders, but don't let the club come off the ground. Pull the handle from here, which is down, start let it coming up as your body rotates and let that club slide through. You're gonna find it's completely stretches you out on the way through. By feeling that your body's turning more, by getting your hands to the low point at a better spot, will allow you then to pull your hands up and to the left, letting that club spin out to the ball. Again, club 45 degrees behind you, open up hips, pressure on the front foot, so right foot almost peeling up, pushing down slightly on the grip, just feel a bit of give in that shaft, see how the grip is lined up with my right leg, and then turn your hips and shoulders, feeling like that handle is coming up and left, and let that come just sweep through. So it'll stay on the ground all the way to kind of where your imaginary ball is, and then it'll start to lift up as your hands lift up. This feeling for students gets them thinking about getting their body turning. It really gives them the idea of how their hands are getting low to then come high, and also how to stretch on the way through, which I think will really help you again keep speed and momentum going, and coordinate with your already okay-ish body turn in the sense of extending on the way through, just with like a little bit more turning with it. Right, I'm off for tennis. So I have a medium, a large, and a medium large glove to give away, also two hats. Five of my followers on Instagram are gonna win some Under Armour gear. Have a good weekend. Remember, hit the comment section up down below with today's question. Have a great weekend. See you all on Monday. Oh. Just, um, so yeah, it's been a busy morning and, uh, Oh, uh, what? Hang on, mine is calling. Yeah, hello?